We've come to southern Turkey, to the foot of a large hill called Gürbekli Tepe. At the top lies something which reveals just what happened to imagery all those thousands of years ago. Researchers first visited Gobekli Tepe in the 1960s. What they found was a hillside that was carpeted with the remains of flint stone working. Little pieces like this. But then they assumed that the site itself had no special archaeological significance. Then, Around 10 years ago, German archaeologists began excavating here. And what they found astonished them. Because under their feet were colossal structures, stone circles built from huge T-shaped megaliths. The site is vast. At least 20 stone circles remain buried, containing hundreds of pillars. In Britain, Stonehenge was built four and a half thousand years ago. But this site is almost three times older. It dates back nearly 12,000 years to the time when people stopped painting in caves. It is pretty obvious that Gebekli Tepe was some kind of ritual center, a meeting place in the mountains with great religious power for the people who created it. So how does this help to explain what happened to our ability to create images? Well, the best time to see that is at night. because it's what's on these pillars that's essential for our story. They're not just megaliths, big stones. They're decorated, covered with carvings of dozens of wild animals. You see these best at night time by the light of a naked flame, just as their creators once saw them. Lions, cranes, boars, foxes. 12,000 years ago, at exactly the time images were abandoned in the caves of Europe, here on a Turkish hillside, they completely gripped people's imaginations. It means images were never an optional extra. Once humans discovered how to create them, they didn't stop. They'd been engraved onto the human mind. But this place may contain an even bigger secret. Because remarkably, it seems to reveal that it was images which created the world we live in today. It's all down to the immense effort that lies behind these images. On one side of the hill, archaeologists discovered an area that had been used as a quarry. This is where the huge pillars that dominated Gobekli Tepe were cut from the limestone bedrock. Here's a pillar that never made it. This is the oblong of the head, and here it narrows to the shaft. For some reason, we'll never know, it was abandoned while still half finished in the bedrock. And here, we've got the space where another pillar was successfully extracted. It 
really is amazing to think that these stones were cut out of the rock and carved with images using only flint tools. Metal didn't exist. And what's also remarkable is their size. Each one of them is about 20 feet long and weighs an estimated 50 tons. That means it would have taken about 500 people just to shift them up the hill. Even the hill itself is man-made. But what's so important about this huge effort is the effect it had on the society that built Gebekli Tepe. 12,000 years ago, hundreds of people travelled long distances to work and worship here. And they all had to eat. Back then, people throughout the world led the lives of hunter-gatherers, hunting wild animals, gathering wild plants. This way of life had successfully supported small groups of people since humans first evolved. Today, though, we feed large numbers of people by farming. We grow crops and keep domesticated animals. Agriculture is the cornerstone of our modern world. Archaeologists had always wondered what made us give up our hunter-gatherer existence? What caused the agricultural revolution, the greatest change in human history? Gebekli Tepe got them thinking, because it was in this area that farming first started. And it happened at the same time this place was being built. Could it have been the need to feed all the people building Gobekli Tepe and worshipping there that first compelled people to start farming? There is some convincing evidence. Scientists recently sought to discover where our modern cultivated wheat came from. They began by analysing the strain of farmed wheat that goes into our food and extracting its DNA. They did the same to several varieties of wild wheat. Then they compared their genetic makeup. And what they discovered is that the closest wild relative to our cultivated wheat grows in those mountains over there, the Karachadag, about 20 miles from Gobekli Tepe. The theory is that wild wheat was brought from the mountains and farmed here to feed the thousands of people frequenting the site. So there's the momentous conclusion that imagery had become so powerful in the minds of human beings that it brought about the greatest transformation in human history.